Hey, what's going on, people? It's SGZ here from the Spartan Game Zone, and in this video, I'll be counting down the top 10 weapons in the whole of Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. Whether these guns glisten orange or not, it doesn't matter because they all deal legendary amounts of damage. I'll be letting you know how you can obtain each gun, explain what they do, and give you tips on maximizing their power. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you could drop a like, feel free to subscribe if you'd like to, or you could even follow me on Twitter, and also don't forget to drop what your favorite weapon is in the comments below. And let's crack into it. We open this countdown of the top 10 weapons in the Wonderlands with the Donkey, Shrek's best friend even if he won't admit it. It only ever comes in poison and can only be dropped by Droll the Troll around here in Queen's Gate. The Donkey has a monstrous magazine size sitting around 100 with a slow reload time and good fire rate. It fires explosive saw blades that stick to your target before detonating a second later, dealing area damage. Each detonating saw blade adds to its overall damage, dealing 30% of its weapon damage, although crits are subject to chance. The Don key to dealing damage with this gun is in sticking those saw blades to your target as quickly as possible. The rare times 2 variant is a massive help with that, and it's perfect thanks to its huge magazine size. But you'll also need that stuck bonus to affect weapon damage instead of melee. Either way, the donkey will have you trampling your enemies, and just this week was given the ability to be enchanted, which has made it even stronger than ever. Up next is the Livewire, an always lightning SMG that has no dedicated drop source, making the SMG bunnies the go-to for obtaining one. The Livewire is a damaging SMG, particularly while mobbing. That's thanks to the laser it fires, which likes to play connect the dots with your enemies, they just don't know the other dots yet. Any enemy close to the one being electrocuted has a chance for a laser to connect to them too, and receive some voltage of their own. That also happens when stabbing enemies, dealing damage relative to that of your melee weapon, which can yield some pretty crazy results. Although the patch notes say the lightning beam scaling was slightly reduced by 12.5%, it seems to have affected its combination with melee builds quite a bit more than that, but the gun itself is still strong. Time now for the Encrapsulator, a well drop Torg assault rifle that like all well drop non legendaries can be found in vending machines, but the bunnies are your best bet. I don't know where Tor gets his names for weapons from, but at least this one ain't called the Porter Pooper 5000. The Encraptulator always fires 3 projectiles per shot, which either explode on impact, or after triggering it's stuck explosives. The latter mode is definitely best, and this gun will pile on the pain better than anything else. What you want to look out for with this gun is a higher magazine size, as that'll always outshine base damage. And you should look for one where its cross bolts boost weapon damage rather than the punchy when they're stuck to your target. The bonus per stuck gyrojet also differs per encrapsulator, but unfortunately it's sometimes hidden behind enchantments. The easiest way to increase the damage of this gun is to increase that mag size, and trust me, it can get abnormally large, just like Pinocchio's not. By firing explosive cross bolts, the barber load can chime in where that's concerned, but oftentimes there's no need as that health bar whittles down to nothing. Moving on to the throwable hole, an SMG manufactured by Ferior that can only come in dark magic. It is best farmed for from the SMG bath bunnies. The throwable hole makes mobbing easy, spawning deadly black holes after you throw it away that will destroy anyone who comes close, although deals no damage to you. Not only does it deal damage on impact, but also for as long as it's active, and will deal its most damage when it detonates, which weirdly counts as spell damage. Throwing another into an already active portal will see it double in size and dots triple in strength. Each portal's timer will reset after throwing another into it, and they have a powerful pull that will drag enemies to their death from far away. It's best made for mobbing purely thanks to its effect, and will deal more damage the more ammo was chucked away with it. 
Now for the Lu Dai, a world drop Torg pistol that can come in all elements, and you'll have the best time farming one from the pistol buff bunnies. Ludite is the Wonderland's peak explosive pistol, firing deadly rounds of TNT which you can set to either stick to your target for bonus damage or explode on impact. As with 99% of Torg weaponry, you want to get that stuck bonus to see your damage numbers go through the roof. The Ludite has one of the biggest stuck gyro jet bonuses, sitting at 35% which rewards you extremely well for attaching high amounts to your target, and it also benefits from stuck cross bolts too. Boosting mag sides will see the greatest increase to its overall damage and equipping a barber load amulet can help there as well. It can come firing 1-3 to three rounds per shot, consuming 1-3 to three ammo, and you should look for the one that allows you to stick the most rounds per reload. It's the most versatile of all sticky stackers, performing great while mobbing or bossing. Moving on now to none other than the Gluttony, a pistol made by Ferior which can only come in dark magic, and drops most often from Droll the Troll around here in Queen's Gate. The Gluttony hides a dark secret within copies of thrown away weapons as they spawn a hungry dagger storm at the point of contact. This is one eye of the storm that is not safe as enemies get torn apart while inside. It's amazing while mobbing, causing enemies to ragdoll through its vortex and even send daggers into enemies from way beyond its reach. There is a cost to summoning such a spectacle and that is half of your health, as each reload sets you to the halfway mark if your health bar is above that point. As with many Ferriors, its damage scales with the amount of ammo left in the mag, so the more the merrier. Spamming reloads is what you should be doing with it for maximum damage and it has no problem against bosses either. Up next we have the Nightshade, a Dahlia SMG that drops from the world making it best farm for from the SMG buff bunnies. There are multiple different types of Nightshades but the one you should be looking for is the Magic Bowed Frost variant that fires multiple projectiles per shot at a rapid rate. It's a gun that tears through everything and everyone, putting many legendary SMGs to shame. Its fire rate is phenomenal, although it will slow down with continuous fire, its burst mode will prevent that, although I still prefer fully auto. Because they only ever come in frost, they're absolutely perfect for berserkers who can lower the temperature of the battlefield dramatically but there's plenty of DPS here for all classes to exploit. If you're struggling to find a Nightshade, then the Spriggan by Hyperius is your next best choice. If you need help remembering, just ask yourself, could this SMG belong in Skyrim? Time now for the Fear Not, a world drop fairy or pistol which can come in all the elements, and is best obtained of course from the pistol buff bunnies. Like all world drop Ferriors, there's a multitude of reload effects they can be blessed with, and you'll want yours to be baptised with Pixies, which are summoned each time you reload with the max cap of 9. On Fear Knots, these Pixies fire faster and can be summoned the quickest, making them the deadliest of all. The main thing here is that these little Pixies scale off spell damage as well as companion damage, which grants a lot of outlets for you to plug damage into. A Zap, Buffmeister and Spellborns will have the most fun dealing unreal amounts of damage. They hunt down enemies better than any Fate Maker could dream of doing, which is a little embarrassing, but why should that matter when all that oppose you are dead? Moving on to the Ruby Spite, a dark magic crossbolt pistol that can only come in that element and drops most often from Monstrous Shroom round here in Weep Wild Dankness. In spite of your enemy's colorblindness, rubies are indeed red, and this gun will have your enemies seeing that exact color when they realize they have no chance to defeat you. This gun is incredibly powerful, particularly while mobbing, although it may not seem that way at first. It initially fires three widespread horizontal projectiles in a slow two-shot burst, but after getting your first kill, those bursts will be rapid, and thanks to absolutely no burst delay, can be railed off incredibly quickly. 
That effect lasts for 5 seconds and is made even better by the fact that its rounds become smart and start homing into enemies. When this thing is firing on all cylinders, it's an absolute blast and will clear arenas in what seems like seconds. You may think arenas is all it can clear, well it can wipe out bosses too, all you need is a volunteer to help charge it up. Before number 1 is revealed, let's dive into some honourable mentions. First up we have the Stabomatic, a new legendary shotgun obtained as part of the Molten Mirrors DLC. If you're familiar with the face puncher, then I don't need to explain this gun at all because it is the same thing, firing 7 or 14 pallets, consuming 1 or 2 ammo, and dealing melee damage instead of gun damage. With it in your hands, you can punch people from range, proccing various melee skills and gear. It's not as busted as the face puncher was, but you can still build for heavy damage, with the Universal Soldier helping avoid reloads forever, making the times 14 far and away the best. The next honorable mention I have for you is the Fragment Rain, a frost only SMG with no dedicated drop source, so you know where to go to get one. The Fragment Rain fires either 4 or 5 projectiles per shot, consuming 2 to 3 ammo, and I find the times 4 variant to be best. It is a demon when it comes to mobbing, thanks to the fact its projectiles fragment on contact with an enemy or surface, and veer off into someone else. You'll constantly see enemies crumble in the background or turn around to see the whole group cleared. It's fantastic for mobbing, and hardly ever puts a foot wrong. The last honourable mention I have for you is the Cow Khan, a sniper rifle which can now be enchanted and comes in all the elements, dropping most often from the sniper rifle bunnies. The Cow Khan fires 5 damaging cross bolts which each boost its damage by 5% and last for a whopping 8 seconds. It always and only fires in 5s with the initial shot widespread, followed by a much tighter grouping. It is great for bossing, dealing massive damage per shot, capable of tearing chunks out of big health bars with each tap of the trigger. Number 1, we're here, we made it, claps all round and taking top spot is the Explosive Sword, which can come in all elements and drops most often from the chance, you fight around here in Warg Tooth Shallows. The Sword Explosion is a gun that shoots swords which explode, I guess the name kind of says that. Whether they explode on impact or later is up to you, but for maximum damage you want to stick them to your target as a sword impales them upon detonation. It fires at a blistering semi-automatic pace, which allows you to stack up its 30% stuck gyrojet bonus almost in an instant. It comes in both times 1 and times 3 variants, with the latter best for mobbing, but has a lower overall damage cap, with the times one best for bossing. It's a gun that can take on anything in the game, and will have you flexing on enemies like Mr. Mr. Talk Handshake Flexington himself. So that's all for this video, I hope you enjoyed it and learned of the top 10 weapons in all of Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. If you did, consider dropping a like or subscribing, and I'll catch you in the next one.